friend of mine got COVID last month. Nothing serious, but it really knocked him out for a week. It actually went from his wife to his kid to him. So all in all, about three weeks of sick people in the same house, and it was a fucking drag. I talked to him on the phone about five days into his illness, and he told me that not a single member of his family had checked in on him. Meanwhile, his wife's family was calling like twice a day. It really bummed him out, and I feel that. Nothing like feeling sick or even down and out and having no one checking in on you. I felt really awful for him. It got me to thinking about how bad I am at checking in on people, and it's something I want to get better at. Now, listen, if they tell me they're really going through it, I think I'm okay at checking in once I know that information. I'm not the best, but maybe a C or C-. minus. Where I really want to get better, though, is reading the signs of when someone's having a rough time. Just asking the question, how are you? Or is everything okay? And then letting one's body language suggest you're open to hearing something more than a short answer, that can really make a difference. At, at least it does for me. So I'll start today's episode by doing just that. This intro is to late 90s, early aughts Japan. How you doing, bud? Everything okay? I saw your movie, The Ring, 1998, and then I saw Pulse, 2001. And then just last night, I watched you on The Grudge, 2002. And these are very sad movies. Super scary, though, and like incredibly well-crafted. So first off, great job at changing the face of horror filmmaking. Great job at changing the face of horror filmmaking as we enter the new millennium. But also, is everything okay over there? I know I'm a couple decades late checking in, but man, those movies really do show a Japan full of quiet, lonely people who hide in the dark, their windows covered, and all communication terminated. They show distorted photos of friends and loved ones, misshapen memories that aren't true to real life. There's a palpable there's a palpable theme of depression and ennui, all marked with grief and last resort acceptance of death. I just want to ask you, late 90s, early aughts Japan, how are you feeling? What's been going on? If you ever need anything, I'm here for you. Remember when you made monsters in rubber suits? Totally fun in those gorgeous Criteria Collection period pieces about ghosts and samurais. Exquisite. Remember all that robot anime and even Miyazaki? Magical. I just wanted you to have fun. I just want you to have fun, late 90s, early aughts Japan, and I want you to know that I'm thinking about you. If you ever need anything like a rewatch of House 1977 or a Happiness of the Katakuri's Shadow Cast sing-along, you let me know. I'll be there in a heartbeat. Hi, Cecil. Hi, Jeffrey. What's your self-care routine when you're sick? Like when you got like a cold or... Self-care routine when I'm sick. Uh, lots of orange juice. Mm. Uh, I usually get a big jug of green tea, iced green tea. Definitely with the chicken soup. Indispensable. Yeah. Like it really, it really is. It's, it's absolutely Jewish penicillin. Um... <laughs> I mean, it's also, it's not just chicken soup, but it's like chicken soup, ramen, um, anything brothy with a boat made from bone broth is, mm -hmm. is all I want. Um, and in general, I'm, you know, I'm pretty much a lazy cat, like, you know, tucked up on the couch, sort of, you know, half in and out of consciousness watching some, I want like the lightest, fluffiest, give me all the Marvel X-Men movies, you know, just something because it's literally a game of killing the hours. Yeah. You can't go out. Nobody wants to come over. Uh, just keep force feeding yourself oranges and watching silly TV until you it's dusk and then yeah. you can put yourself to bed. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's I think that's a great way to go. Yeah, I'm definitely a, I have to kind of do the mantra in my head of it's OK to not work right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's okay to just uh you know it's okay just to lay in bed and you know yeah. do puzzles and just yeah. not do anything at all and just lots of water yeah and uh that sort of thing yeah i know i i, I got a, a really bad case of the flu last But I just I can't I can't do this I can't even leave my house right now, um, and they were like, "Yes, please do not come and infect all of us with your with your flu." <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out. But it was for the rest of that day. I felt like the most extreme 
not, I guess FOMO is, is the closest, but that thing of like, I know that right now everybody's doing their thing and I should be a part of that, but I can't because I literally can't open my eyes and it hurts to cough every time, every 30 seconds. I do appreciate that we, after COVID, we've gotten a little bit better of just like, you're sick, don't come in. Mm -hmm. Like COVID or not, just, yeah. it's a nice reminder that diseases are communicable Mm -hmm. and that, and that work is not as important as (laughs) having everyone in the office losing their fucking minds. Yeah. Well, this movie, man, this is a spooky fucking ride. This is, it is. I, I, I'm, I'm glad we, I'm glad I, I, I steered us to this movie because this movie to me is like one of the hallmarks of Japanese horror, but mm-hmm. also I would say like world horror, like yeah, where horror movies can go that are super scary, you know, like we've got, you know, the traditional sort of, you know, long hair ghosties of Japan, uh-huh. cr- crawl, spider walking in and out of closets and up and down stairs. Yeah. But like your intro said, it's it's not your typical Hollywood horror scare fest. There's not a bunch of, I mean, there are some there are some teenagers in it, but they're uh-huh. not the like okay, this one's the slutty one, this one's the funny drug user, this <laughs> yeah. one's the jock. It's it's much more. This is a it's a bit more of a film. This movie it, it is asks, it asks more of its viewer than I think a lot of Hollywood movies expecting horror did. And that's why I think, you know, and and the remake or the Hollywood remake is pretty darn good. Amazing special effects. But there's something about this original that is so quietly spooky. Yeah. There's definitely some, like, post-production touch-ups mm-hmm. to for effects. It's not CGI. It's more, like, hand-drawn, anim- you know, yeah. like, sh- shading in, shadowing yeah. filters, things like this. Uh, but they... You know this. Uh, there's there's an element of buto in this, right? Like the oh, the, the, sure. the 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 child in the white face. Mm-hmm. You know the powdery white face makeup, like the eyes, the the the, the makeup on the eyes, the little um, little cat lines on the eyeliner. Yeah. You know, it's uh, the the twisted face of expression, like frozen yeah. expression. That's so hallmark to buto. It's mask work, and yeah. it's such effective mask work, and. You know the 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 final shot in the the uh, the original ring uh, is that well one of the the final like scare of that movie yeah. is the close up of her eye opening behind the the hair and this movie uses eyes in the same way. Um, yeah, I was looking. I always look for a background for our Zoom calls, and uh, <laughs> I had one of Kayako on on the on the stairwell that was she's so perfectly peeking out from be peeking out from behind my head on this call yeah, just it's like just, right over your shoulder it's just such a freaky image and i just don't want to do that to our youtube was, viewers <laughs> for like, an hour and a half freaking me out and uh, not in a cute fun way and i know if it's freaking me out then other people will not be able to handle this yes it's uh i remember once you know uh, you know our friend joseph fink is also a big horror movie fan and uh, I just, I, you know, I just have a bunch of Zoom backdrops and we got on for a business meeting one time and I just had, uh, I had the ring because we covered okay. the ring yeah. and the ring was still my backdrop. And so it's uh, Sadako from the ring in the background with that long hair hanging down <laughs> over her face. And Joseph was like, please take that off. I cannot look at that. It's, that movie still freaks me out. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's a good one. I, mm-hmm. I know for, for a while I tried to, I tried to match your game. Mm-hmm. I was a little bit more like I would find an image and then just the same, just sort of leave it up. And it was um from The Visitor. Do you oh, remember yeah. The Visitor? I but do. it was when they were all in that sort of other, other world where there's like a whole bunch of little bald children in, yes. a, in a fern Victorian greenhouse. At Space Jesus's home. S- sp- at, at Space Jesus's home. And I remember I logged on to something businessy, you know, with people uh-huh. like, you know, a staged reading of a Shakespeare play or something like that. And everyone's like, what the literal fuck is happening in your life right now, Cecil? <laughs> Are you OK? And I was like, oh, it's just it's for a, it's for a podcast. Uh-huh. I make a podcast. I thought it was funny because I was also, you know, I shaved my head. Uh-huh. So it would I don't know. It just fitting in with my space Jesus friends here. <laughs> oh, I can change this here. There we go. I changed. Yeah, I had not seen this movie 
until last night. And it's, uh, I, I think the thing that I found really interesting, the, I think the thing I found most surprising about it, which I guess I shouldn't have, is is how how smart the story is, just the 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 structure of how it's laid out. Uh, I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of like stories told in segments, like modular storytelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, if you go to the Wikipedia summary, like I told you right before we started, Cecil, that on the Wikipedia page, if you look up plot summary for Jew on the Grudge. Uh, it is it starts with like a little note saying this film is told uh, is not told in chronological order this is in chronological order but it, it it's not that far out of chronological order because yeah. each of the segments is it it's it's it makes it sound like it's going to be more wild ass than it really is but it's it's similar to like a pulp fiction just shorter mm -hmm. right that type of non chronological or like the godfather godfather 2 like when they did the chronological godfather and they just uh, sort of took one movie and just pasted it in front of the other they're uh -huh. like there we go we fixed this for you <laughs> enjoy your 7 hour film yes in chronological order uh, but, but yeah. i think the chronology of this movie one i love the idea that each chapter kind of follows a person Same. i think that's such a wonderful way to structure a film Especially a film with a lot of people moving in and out of a house. Uh-huh. Um, and and it I think this movie asks something of its audience that is it kind of keeps you on the back foot. Yeah. Because you're like, okay, I know what the house is, I know where we're at, but who are these people? Yeah. How are you know, you're constantly kind of like piecing together a murder mystery yeah. kind of vibes rather than the traditional Hollywood horror of something bad, something bad's going to happen. Uh oh, little things, and uh -huh. now many bad things. Yeah. So also, this movie opens with kind of a, a misdirect too. I mean, well, one, it starts with Juan the Grudge. It says the the Juan, the curse of one who dies in the grip of powerful rage. Right, like yes. so this. This grudge is the is, is, is telling grudge. yeah creates this juan the, this this spirit that wants to create that wants vengeance right that yeah. wants you know wants to resolve its anger issues. But this opening scene is really fascinating because this movie, like we said earlier, is a creep fest. It's it's yeah. scary faces in the dark. It is not uh, a slasher. It is not a gore fest. It is not any of that. But the opening scene makes it look like you're about to fucking watch Hostel. Yes, it does. Does it? I was like, I forgot because it's been 20 years since I've seen yeah. this movie. I was like, oh, this movie's getting right to it. There's like dude with a box cutter covered in blood, uh, just spinning around in circles in his room, cutting and pasting. Very seven. Uh, like I was uh -huh. getting very, very Kevin Spacey seven vibes from this. He like the cat meows. He grabs that cat and up oh, the cat's dead. Uh -huh. Any movie that begins with the killing of an innocent animal, you're like, am I ready for this? Yeah. Are, we, are we ready? For, are, okay, okay, here we go. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> content warning cat death, but it's, it, yeah, it's so bloody. And you, you, you understand that, there is this man who has killed his wife. He just killed the cat. And you presume yeah. he's about to kill his son as well. Yeah. Like that's the family here. Yep. Um, and it's it it does set the tone not for the blood level in this movie because the blood is almost non-existent in this mm -hmm. movie. What it sets, but it sets the tone for what the sound is going to be like in this movie. Jeffrey, the sound design in this film is so good. Uh huh. And so surreal. Um, everything from non-traditional sounds. So like, you know, there's a couple places where I think Rika, anytime she tries to walk up those stairs, there's like a megahertz kind of sound. The high like pitch. A, like a high pitch. So things like that that are storytelling but are not in the film. Yeah. You know, like it's not a door, it's not a door slam. It's not, there's plenty of that. There's plenty of creepy cat noises. Listen. Uh-huh. I'm glad my cat was not around because my cat would have been flipping the fuck out while watching <laughs> this movie because of the cat sounds. But then also you have this surreal, like later in the film, um, you have the young boy um, who like opens his mouth and makes a cat sound. Yeah. So like that sort of very surreal disconnect of image and sound that's not 
anything new. This has been around since like Louis Bunuel, you uh -huh. know, and like surrealist filmmakers, but it's so spooky. Yeah. It's also um there's a there's a repeated sound of like a death rattle type of yes. thing that that people make that yeah, it's it's guttural. Like it's it's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's clickety like, clackety you, back of the throat you just sound. Need a Ricola? <laughs> you need a cough drop? Do you want to Do you need a neti pot maybe? Yeah. Do you want I can do you need some lemon tea and honey? Yeah, that's it. Maybe one of those little steamers that you like that like opera singers oh, use to like God. put their whole nose and you know steam it out. Uh-huh. And they do. The yeah. dead need some self-care regimens. Yeah. I need a WWRFD, what would Renee Fleming do? Um, bracelet. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we start with the Social Welfare Center. And we meet Rika, who is kind of one of, she's one of our main through, kind of the yeah. main through line of, if you were to say, a main character. If Listen, she, she lives, the, she lives the, the longest. <laughs> yes. And she kind of touches on the most stories, and she's a volunteer at the at the at the welfare center. And uh, I've already put his name's on another page, but there's a guy there who is saying, "Hey, Rika, can you go check out this house? Right, like the 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 uh, the Tokunaga family. Yeah, just do you a gotta go check, check on on the check in on the wellness. You know, wellness. They they it's a it's a husband and wife, and then his mom and." You just need to go check in because we haven't heard from them. And the previous caseworker is gone. We don't know where uh, he went. He's not returning uh -oh. our calls. Listen, okay. That's the other thing about this film is that it's like the Nokia cell phones, the flip phones with the mm -hmm. little dangles on them. It was at such a time where like communication was still old, but still kind of new. Yeah. Like people are paging each other. Yeah. So this idea of, trying to get in touch with other people is not the iPhone world that we live in now. Right. It's like, if you were trying to call somebody, you just had to call them and let that phone ring for days mm -hmm. until they picked up. Yeah. You couldn't like send them a pin. Here's where I'm at. No, <laughs> no, no. Also, this movie is an, I forgot how much, how amazing this movie is at the day scare factor. Oh, true. Yeah. Like very little of this film is like on a dark and stormy night kind of horror film. This is not, you know, so for a haunted movie, like a haunted house movie, this is like in broad daylight. Yeah. On a nice, quiet suburban street that looks like any other suburban street. There's trouble a brewing, uh -huh. which is, so, which to me is like, that's so creepy. Yeah. I love day scare films that can like evoke that sense of this house looks like perhaps yours yeah on a nice sunny day the birds are singing the the dead are rattling mm -hmm. the cats are meowing the day scare is so good too at a deeper level of fright that's not on the surface it's this inner fright that in the daytime if they can get you in the daytime in the in public yeah you know you're really not safe. It's because sometimes no. you think, you know, in a slasher in the woods in the middle of the night, if you could just get to town, yeah, you would be yeah. safe because the slasher's not going to come. Find out. a phone, find yeah. a a garage, a, a gas station. Yeah, they're not going to knife you in a Chili's, you yeah. know. And so I mean, they might. <laughs> yeah, who knows? But there's a yeah, that, and so there there's a really great. Like the one of the most unnerving scares in this movie comes late when you see the old man at the wellness yeah. center waving at a child playing peekaboo, playing with an peek invisible child, and it's so creepy because like no one else can see it, uh -huh. and also it just tells you, oh, our protagonist is fucked here, yeah, um, because no one could help her even yeah. if they wanted to. I think it's it's the sister. Um, the the sister who was kind of coming in, and when by the time she gets grudged, uh -huh. you know, she gets all grudged up. Um, I I was like, where are you gonna go? Like this thing has followed her to her workplace, then to her home. There's nowhere. Like she's like hiding under the covers. You're like, there's nowhere. No, you've got grudge all over you. <laughs> 
So I, oh, go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I was going to make a stupid joke about how like the grudge, the Juon kind of acts like dog shit. You know, it's like, oh, it's like, mm-hmm. it's like if you get even a little bit on you, it is with you forever. Yeah. Like you're going to carry that with you for days. Yeah. And even if you just walk past somebody who's been grudged, you're yeah. going to get grudged. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of interesting your your introduction talking about sort of communicable diseases uh-huh. and the feeling of, you know, like, you know, my wife got sick and then or my kid got sick and then get them to the wife and then to me and this sort of chain effect. So even though you've been healthy, you know, this person in your story was healthy for like three of those six weeks, it's still been around. So you've been in this environment of sickness or this you know and i think the grudge the the juan ha, like operates in a very similar way mm-hmm. so you're like hey how's it going you're like i don't know i'm having kind of a rough day you're like oh well i you just got grudge all over me <laughs> now i've got to take this to work and grudge some security guard yeah well rika gets to uh the tokunaga family house mm-hmm. it is trashed Ooh. inside there's so much just shit everywhere it's i also love the moment before she enters yes it's like again a beautiful sunny day nice suburban area you know kind of very very typical and the sec like she even has a moment of trepidation before she walks under the arch leading to the house and there's nothing wrong with the house yeah but there's this feeling and then it kind of cuts to like a really high up shot like as if taken from the roof like she's being observed entering the house so already mm-hmm. the paranoia is starting to work on me yeah I'm yes like don't go in there <laughs> girl don't do it mm-hmm. you're a volunteer you're not even getting paid for this yeah she's already like She's even startled coming in. Yeah, just the mm-hmm. the look on her face uh, when she comes up to the house before she, like she even knows something wrong. Yeah, yeah. And um, so this is uh, she meets the old woman Sachi, mm-hmm. who's the the mother there, and Sachi has very little to say. She is just tranced. Yeah. yeah, catatonic is a stage of getting grudged. Yeah. When you get grudged, you get catatonic because it it starts to let you know you're marked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is coming for you. But she sees, um, she ends up seeing like uh, hands up on a window on a, you know, oh, that's that's when she that's, finds Sachi. That's uh, Sachi, yeah. Yeah, Sachi. So uh, the scratching, again, back to the sound, mm-hmm. it's this like, normal 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 she's like i guess i'll go clean up this old lady's house you know like just you know totally and and the like sort of pawing scratching sound Uh uh-huh and that is the least of her worries yes exactly and she finds the photo she finds on the floor Mm -mm. if you find a photo in a house where like a whole ass person has been torn out of the photo just go just be like you know what I I can't do this. There's nothing more I can do here. Mm-hmm. Burger King is hiring. I think yeah. that's oh, a great, thing I great. could be doing. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, the post office. Are we uh, uh-huh. get a job at the post office? I also love the way um, the mother, uh, even though she she's so still, you know, like she's non-responsive. She's you know doesn't say anything. She won't look you know uh, Rika in the eye, but like Rika goes to like open a window and the camera kind of moves outside from one room to the other. And the mother is just there. Uh huh. Which is so, like in camera effects of like, she just literally just got up and moved to another room logically. But from our point of view, like what it's like object impermanence, like she was there and now she's not fucking terrifying. Yeah. She follows those noises upstairs, and inside the kids' room, there is a sliding door closet that has been taped closed, like shoddily with packing tape. Like nothing you put in there, no, unless it was an earthworm, yeah, is staying in there. No, (laughs) no, no, it's just anything can break through that tape. It's more of a gesture, really. Mm -hmm. 
a symbol, uh-huh. a, 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 a whiff of a barrier. Yes. And she meets uh, she meets the cat. Oh my gosh! Little a, black kitty cat. That still, we saw oh, in the opening. Oh, it's just the black cat. Oh, that's nice. Oh, and a child. Boo scare. And a child. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. This kid. Oh my gosh! This is like, uh, what is it? Um, what is the, Toshio? The name? Toshio. This kid icon. Icon. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, it's. I think there's a reason why. Like this sort of just kids are creepy. Yeah. Especially, especially because we have no idea what the fuck is going on inside their weird little still forming brains. Right. So if a kid that is like kind of quiet, standoffish, hiding in a clot, like clearly a ghost. Yeah, absolutely. And he's, but he's not presented in ghost form when we first see him. No. He just looks like a kid. Yeah. So Rika's like, hey, little boy, what you, yeah. what you doing in there? Uh-huh. She's got. A, she's like, I gotta call my boss because there's a kid here. I wasn't told there was a, supposed to be a kid here, <laughs> and he hasn't even started like just peering through the window at her. No. Yes. And he uh, he tells her his name is Toshio, so he says his name out loud yeah. to her. Yeah. She calls the welfare center. Um, meanwhile, somebody calls the house she's in and leaves a woman leaves a voicemail. You can hear it on the answering machine. I'm like, hey, just just a little worried. I say, how's mom doing? Just checking in, make sure everything's okay over there, you guys. But she calls and tells, you know, she's telling the welfare center what up. And then um she goes back to Sachi, who is just muttering. I told her again and again. I told her. I told her again. I told her. I told her. And covering Uh her eyes. And Uh then. And then crazy fucking just dark haired spirit woman descends upon her. And it's. It is a choice to make (laughs) this your villain. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's also there's like a long tradition of sort of the the unkempt like hair mm-hmm. in the face in Japan. Like that's a like a like you know I'm 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 guessing the, the equivalent is um sort of the Jacob Marley with chains yeah. in Western spirits, you know, like rattling rattling chains to Western ghosts is to unkempt hair in the face in Japanese spirit lore. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's so interesting because you know for this this movie to you know gain the worldwide popularity it did. I, I I'm having a hard time thinking of any Western film like particularly like Hollywood film that would yeah. have had any any visual scare like this in 2002. Maybe maybe the the ring had already been out a few years. So, um, but yeah, this is a very particular thing, and it is it is a very old image uh yeah. in in Japan um in east asia but yeah it's really spooky and then we see a close-up of that eye and rika passes out basically and then into chapter one chapter two katsuya so now we meet katsuya and his wife uh kazumi and they are in bed waking up in the morning early morning there's just all kinds of noise and sound Katsuya coming downstairs. There's just trash everywhere on the yeah. stairs and toys and junk. And you're like, oh, they must have a kid. They must like something. Well, it's it's a lot of <laughs> torn paper. Yeah. It's which we junk. know from the opening, our psycho killer loves tearing up paper. He does love He's like a paper macheist. Mm-hmm. Papier mache. <laughs> He's just been some late night crafting. Yep. And she's pissed. She's like, your mom was up all freaking night. Yeah. And so, and then we see who his mom is, which is Sachi. So we're like, okay, well, we've jumped backwards in time. Yes. This must be the family that we needed to do a welfare check on. Yeah. And Katsuya says, he tells his wife, uh, Kazumi, I will, I'll talk to the helper. Meaning right. the guy from the welfare center who comes yeah. in and checks in on mom. And she says, well, you'll be home early tonight, right? Because your sister... Hitomi is coming over for dinner. He's like, oh, it's like, it's oh, like her I, birthday or something. I totally yeah. remembered. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Family that. dinner. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. But uh, 
Katsumi wakes up from her like afternoon nap to her tea cup being like and... knocked over. And she sits up thinking thinking it's Sachi who is in the other room. <laughs> and you hear those like creepy foot knock. And then there's just mom just sitting there still catatonic. And she's like, now listen, mother-in-law, mm -hmm. if you need something, you should just tell me. And we're like, it's not the mother-in-law. No. And then the black cat on the stairs. This is, oh, I would lose my mind if this happened to me in real life that I watched my cat go all the, I mean, she, this, this is not even a cat. Not she even her knows. cat. Um, but this cat goes all the way up the stairs and she kind of, peers her head around the corner, watch it, sees it sitting at the top of the stairs, and then just around the corner, two hands, pick up the cat and pick and take it uh, off. Uh, <laughs> girl, you better burn that house down and move. Uh, uh, because having an animal in your house, odd, but you know, uh -huh. cats are cats are kind of mystical. Their cats are very jellical creatures. They get uh -huh. in and out of places they shouldn't uh -huh. always be. But if there's a person that you did not know is in your house, like and, and you don't even see the person, you just see like their hands, burn it down, Jeffrey. Yeah, I absolutely. would lose my goddamn mind. I would be out that door first. I'd be like, mom, we okay, get your galoshes on because we are going to the mall for the rest of the day. For the rest of our lives, for the we rest are of just our lives. going to stop and shop and that's all we need. That's it. We're going to be like Tom Hanks in that airport movie where he just <laughs> lived in the airport for 10 years because I cannot deal with this. Um, when Katsuya gets home, neither his wife nor his sister are there. Just mom in a trance. And the house is even more trashed. Yeah. And it's not, tr it's like cluttered. Oh, oh, I wanted to talk about this. Um, when when Rika, the the eeriness of how spaces are presented in this film of sort of a cluttered house is sort of presented as a cluttered mind. Like this grudge uh -huh. likes a lot of mess, you know, which is very antithetical to like, you know, nice tidy, keep your house sort of tidy. But when Rika first gets to the house, it's not just the clutter. Everything is quiet and still except like the chandelier is just barely yes. moving. Or the the, <clears throat> the the pendulums on the grandfather clock are swaying back and forth. So there's like energy is moving around in this house, yeah, but not moving anything. It's not poltergeist, you know, where you put the chair on one end of the kitchen and the chair moves. This is like, some sort of like energy vortex was going full tilt and up until the minute that you press the doorbell. Yeah. And so you're seeing the after effects of it. Yeah. Fucking terrifying. And you get that same feeling when uh, uh, Katsuya gets home and it's that same thing of like, nobody's, nobody's moving. Nobody's talking. Uh-huh. But like, you, you know that there's a presence there. Yeah. When he gets upstairs, he finds Kazumi on, on the bed, on the ch child's bed, um, in this trance. Yeah. Um, like, I thought she was dead. Yeah, I did too. Like, like, she looks scared to death, like eyes wide open. Yeah. He starts to call for an ambulance, and then you see, like, <laughs> Toshio, like, tip, tip, tip in the background. Oh, my God. This whole sequence. This, I I, I loved it. The actor that did this, I thought, I think does an amazing job because he's, starts off very normal, very kind of like work a day, you know, lower lower management, you yeah. know, kind of like go into, in his ill-fitting suit, go into uh -huh. the office, kind of like, yeah, 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 okay. And then his reaction to the ghost in his house is like some of the most believable relatable acting i've seen in horror movies like he's not screaming and running away he's like knows something is there and always just over his shoulder it's when he goes to like he like just looks at like a little papasant or like a little footstool uh -huh. and he just like knocks it over like <laughs> is that is that it is uh-huh were you hiding under he like peeks under the bed i don't know i i thought this whole sequence because it's very realistic it's the middle of the day you know something is fucked up your wife is non-responsive 
and you keep thinking you're seeing something out of the corner of your eye. Yeah. Go live at the airport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he does finally come face to face with Toshio, who one appears suddenly. So that's a visual jump scare mm -hmm. with those eyes and that pale white makeup on his face. And then he screams like a cat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kazumi strains like her whole body strains yeah. and then presumably dies, seems to have a death here. It seems like, yeah. And then Katsuya's face turns nasty and he starts yeah. gnawing on his fingers like mm -hmm. our killer at the beginning. Yeah. So and it's and it's all an act. It's like his whole the whole like makeup. And I mean it's it's not makeup. Uh it's the 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 way he holds his face. Yeah changes which is such a like it's just a testament to like how good subtle acting can be yeah you know and he goes from being kind of dopey with a little dopey haircut and then all of a sudden it's like all angles and malice in his yeah. eyes again great mask work it's you know the, yeah. the, the direction you hold your chin it mm -hmm. says so much about what you're doing he uh this is when he told me his sister shows up for dinner yep. again Comes in, no one's there, just Sachi yeah. sitting in a trance. She's like, I guess I'll just get, hey, mom. Oh, okay, you're not Start making dinner. today. Yeah, I yeah. guess I'll chop these tomatoes. She hears Russell, that. Russell, 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 Russell. 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 <laughs> um, she hears the high-pitched squeal and then goes around the corner and just is kind of startled to see Katsuya sitting on the stairs. And he's like, uh, Kasumi went out. Something came up. This isn't a very good time. And then he gets into... She had another man. That is not my child. That is not my child. <laughs> he finally, like, this is so interesting because he's he's clearly been possessed or em yeah. he's embodying. Yeah. Oh, what's his head? Uh, Takeo? Uh, who's the, the killer at the beginning? Is, uh, yeah, Takeo. Mm -hmm. He's clearly embodying this killer's yeah. spirit. And you see the actor here playing Katsuya, like snap back to Katsuya for just a moment and yeah. just say, listen, you have to go. You just get go. Out here. Get, and yeah. pushes her out the door. Yeah. Just such Horrifying. a good scene. Such a good act. Yeah. Such a good actor here. Like he just did an incredible job with this scene. And it's, it's also just like what a great way to create spookiness, scariness, tension, uh -huh. suspense, not a drop of blood no violence you know it's all in someone you think you know behaving very oddly and you have no explanation yeah i don't know i i it's i don't know i think it's it's a great it's great it's so good but we also know y'all are fucked <laughs> every one of y'all done you got some grudge on your shoe well now we're gonna get to our next chapter he to me so we're gonna follow sister yeah, um, I like the sister. She's, she, I mean, honestly, like, I think also very how normal people would react in this situation. Yeah. She's like, just, a, you know, she's like, good, just going to work, doing her thing. Also, the haircuts in this movie. Listen, everybody looks like they're in Destiny's Child. <laughs> you know, it's like that feathered kind of like late, late Rachel, uh -huh. <laughs> late friends, Rachel. Yeah. Kind of, oh man, the haircuts are sending me the super skinny sleeves on everything. Mm -hmm. it, it took me right back to the 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 Y two Ks magnificence. Well, she's <laughs> she's calling uh brother and sister in law, and then this is where we, we hear, hear the, we hear the other phone side call. of the voicemail. Which which in a movie that jumps around in time, it's good to have these sort of tent poles to be like, yeah. aha, yes, now we know. Where this is, chron chronology happens here. So this is this Hitomi scene is happening several days after the previous mm -hmm. Katsuya scene, which is happening, and it's also happening like simultaneously with the Rika, Rika scene, going yeah. to their house. So she walking down this hallway and she can hear noises and shit following her because yeah. also like her anytime. Anytime you're on the phone in this movie and you've been grudged. Grudged. 
that that fucking grudged. phone is gonna let you know that you have yeah. been grudged and it, again it's like she's just walking and it sounds like it's it's non how to describe this it's it's not a sound that's recognizable it sounds like fabric sweeping like stiff fabric sweeping across a floor yeah like it's not representative of anything it's not you know it's not but it's just so eerie again there's nothing around you're alone at work in a hallway far far away from the grudge house Uh uh-huh and yet something is still fucking following you you know we talk about like real world shit that spooks you you know you talk about like in an in a very large public space that is empty yeah mine is mine is definitely long fluorescent hallway alone and yeah. so like the number of hotels that we do oh, there's yeah. sometimes oh. when i'm just at night and i and the lights are a certain way i'm like no just walk fast get to if, get if to room 338 long, yeah if it's too long you're like i swear you know it's like one o'clock in the morning you're right about to go to bed and you're like i swear to god if, the, if all these doors open up at once <sighs> if 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 someone appears at the end of that hallway uh uh-uh. and just starts running no fuck my life i am out of here Yep. Do you know what's even worse? Do you know what's even worse than long fluorescent hallways? Watching long fluorescent hallways on CCTVs. <gasps> CCTVs are freaky in movies. And we get, yeah. and sure enough. <laughs> yep. So, okay, so, so. Well, she's she goes to the bathroom at one point in time. Yep. The, the, again, spooky shit happening in the bathroom. There's another yep. appearance of the long-haired woman coming out of the mm-hmm. stall. She, she knows something is coming for her so she goes to the security guard she's like there's somebody in that bathroom something is fucked up in there and so he's like i'll go check it out and he does and she watches him go down this hallway stop in front of the bathroom and then that screen is going static 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 i love it i love it they do this a couple times this is also a very i feel like very very not hallmark to japan but it is a very and not Hallmark to the early 2000s, but this idea that, like, spirits affect, you know, microwaves and, and you know, technology waves. I mean, clearly in The Ring, it's ghost-inhabited VHS tapes. Yeah. One missed call, ghost-inhabited uh, cameras, ghost-inhabited, you know, ghosts can, but when ghosts and technology meet, so much fun. <laughs> yes. So yes. much fun. Yes. <laughs> It's, um, it's like it's like somebody's putting a magnet in front of the television. I think is my guess as to how they got that effect. I think so, but it has I that, really, like, I really enjoy the nature TV show she turns on later and the woman's face the way that no, bubbles up. No, no, oh, they like deconstruct this woman's face and then it's like put together into a twisted, twisted so screen scary. face. So scary, and it's like she's like. The wombat lives to be 30 years old and yep. mates with this other wombat. <laughs> <laughs> so she she watches this like security guard on CCTV get like enveloped with like a black cloud sort of thing. Yeah. But the she actually doesn't continue watching the whole tape. We don't get to see she's, it. She's fucking out of there, which she's, again, yeah, correct. Yes, correct. Like, what do you do? You've set, you've gone for help. You know, like we're so taught in movies, like go, go get help. Help will, you know, the, no, the help, the help just got eat. Yeah. Eaten. She, oh God, this is such good. Sp- this whole movie, I, I I need to stop saying what's good because the <laughs> there's so many good spooky yeah. scares. It's all, every scare in this movie is, there's a couple of jumps, but almost every scare is just, some creepy fucking thing happening in the background. Slow burn. Yeah. Slow burn. Slow burn scares. She gets back to her high rise apartment. Gets it's her elevator. I remember this from Dark Water, like a uh, window on the elevator. Yes. yes. As she's getting on, a woman is like rushing toward it, and she gets that door closed. She's like door closed, door closed, door closed, door closed. That's Kayako, right? Or is that just a stranger that is I think trying it's to just get just a stranger? Okay. And I couldn't tell if we were in her home or if she was trying to escape the workplace but i think this is her home this is her home because she's going up the up, elevator yes. yeah it took me a second because again we're there's a lot of jumps in time and place uh-huh. and 
Um, and 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 it does kind of you have to kind of piece this movie together a little bit. Do. But you figure it out eventually. It's not that complicated. She's not watching the window of the elevator, but we no. are. And every single floor is that little boy's face in the window. <laughs> oh, no. Just looking at you. Until she gets to her floor and then and there's no, no one. Little boy. Um, she gets her ass back into the apartment. So there is a there was like a little one of the things that happened in the bathroom earlier to her was she had found a little teddy bear had unsnapped well, had, from no, I, her purse. Yeah, it was like a little charm attached to her purse. And when, you know, ghost ghost lady came out of the the stall next to her, it's like it snagged. And she left it behind. Gotcha. You've been grudged. You've been grudged. But that that was not was that her charm to begin with or did she not know that that was attached because later when she oh, gets home know. that little teddy bear is there and she's like what the fuck well, i i think it's i think it's hers i didn't notice it and i didn't go back to like yeah. you know fact check this but it seems like it was on her purse it snagged she tries to grab it like she like in the bathroom it seems like she's like oh my oh my you know my charm but she gets so scared she runs away and then when she's at her apartment later, she's noticing the it's just like the little keychain part of it. Yeah. Okay. And so she's like, oh fuck, I left that behind. Like, like a doll, like it's like a like the grudge operates again. If you get even just a little bit, it's like, uh-huh. Oh yeah, we're well, gonna follow that grudge all the way across town. Well, she's gonna find the teddy bear very soon, and it'll all yeah. be fine. She gets her teddy bear back. She, yeah, she she okay this is incredible but too the, where she gets uh, the phone call from her brother from her, her brother brother quotes who's by my head one we know she lives high up in a high-rise apartment building yeah. yeah he calls her he says hey i'm outside in front of your building what's your apartment number again she goes and she's like oh thank god oh like she's, she's like thank a, god she, yeah. 702 hurry Thank you. Knock, 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 knock. Fuck me up. No. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> uh -uh. no, no, no. Because that means either this person is lying to you or you've been grudged. <laughs> and she, she looks through the viewfinder and sees her brother. And he looks normal. Looks, you know. A little fidgety, a little grudgy, but, but not, not too but, bad. But no, he doesn't look No, he doesn't. He no, he doesn't. Looks, it's... Yeah, he looks a little worn for wear. His yeah. hair's a little disheveled, whatever. But he he's there, and she opens the door, and he is not there. Uh-uh. Girl, get out of She spikes that phone like she just scored a touchdown. <laughs> so true. She, she, she throws that phone out the fucking door. <laughs> Devil be gone. And then she this gets... house is clean. She gets her ass in bed and unplugs the landline. Yeah. Just tries to turn on the TV, yeah. which that's no help because that woman's face on the nature show is like, Bleh. yeah, it turns into the weird twisted. It almost looks like the ghost face from scream. Yeah. You know, like big hollow eyes, twisty mouth. Uh huh. Again, more mask work. Like th this idea that like a, a distorted face is all you need to portray yeah from beyond the grave and then in bed she's she's thinking i'm safe under covers right uh, safe right? from anything also i love her i, I was actually kind of I was like oh i like her i like her quilt pillow this like mm -hmm. sort of persimmon pattern mm -hmm. this is cute <laughs> i'm into this can we get this at muji what's going on here uh i'm not into the quilt that contains scary face ghost woman underneath it though underneath it yep who just pulls the oh god this Oh. This is so low, low tech, scary as fuck, Jeffrey. Like, because she's like got the covers up to her neck, but I don't think she's, she's, she's sort of like closed her eyes or something. And we just see like, like a bulk, like a, a, like a, almost like a pregnancy bulge. Yeah. Grow under the covers. And we're like, no, no. It's like no, the reverse of lights out where it's like the. Yes. We've traced the call. The call is coming from under your mm -hmm. blankets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, sure enough, she lifts up those covers. There's Kayako. Ah! 
and she just sucks her in. I I love how people just can disappear. The, the, the impermanence of people in this movie is really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. bodies that are never found people go missing we don't even we don't we don't know explanation i don't think it's ever given an explanation what happens to this woman no it's just like she reported a thing at work she disappeared yeah well that's next chapter toyama um this is where now we are dealing with Hirohashi, who is the guy from the welfare center that had sent yes. Rika, the volunteer, yep. off to her doom. Yep. He goes to the Tokunaga house because yep. it's been uh how like many days? Yeah, yeah. Like a few days. He hasn't heard from Rika. Yeah. He goes to the house, he finds Sachi dead. Yes. Like, and oof. he finds Rika in a trance. Yep. So now, and he finds no husband wife no. there no. and so the police are called in so we get detectives nakagawa and igarashi i love a police procedural i do too it's like it's like like sp this this movie actually kind of reminds me of terrified like yeah a little bit yeah you know like the, like it's everyday scare day scare normal neighborhood the police are baffled but also kind of like trying to trying to keep an open mind but uh -huh. just are ill-equipped yes what the fuck is happening these police are very ill-equipped but they're but trying hard they are trying I, I i really appreciate that they are that there's a like I use this word in the terrified episode there's a credulousness they're like yeah. you know we're gonna do our best yeah um which will not be enough but it's fine i appreciate the effort but they the first thing they do is they call katsuya's phone and they hear it ringing upstairs and upstairs and upstairs and they find those two people's bodies in the attic oh. didn't even know there was an attic mm -mm. that attic is and we know the attic is sort of the the, the like the psychic epicenter of the grudge yeah like we get this instinctual feeling that all the bad shit has gone on up there. Yeah. So what will a couple of things that we're gonna learn here is, is that well, one one Rika gets sent to you know hospital basically. Um, and we're gonna meet her friend uh Mariko. Yeah. And uh we also are gonna learn that you know, uh one of the detectives, the younger detective, which is uh Igarashi. He, in his research, finds that there used to be a family, the Saiki, fam the Saiki family, uh, used to live there. Takeo Saiki murdered his wife, and they never found the boy, the child. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Kayako, his wife, her body was found in the attic. In the attic. T Takeo's body was just found in the road in the yeah. by a neighbor like he like a neighbor found him dead in the street a yes. day later so when 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 detective nakagawa is interviewing rika she tells him listen, listen did y'all find the boy there was a boy in that apartment he told me his name was toshio <laughs> this is where the detectives are like well there used to be a boy named toshio and he was that was five years ago. Yeah. Uh, if you said he was like a six-year-old boy, that would match the description five years ago, but that yeah, kid yeah, would yeah. be 11 now. So that is, something is amiss. And they and they have the photo. The police have the photo. They're like, is this the boy? She's like, yeah, that's him. That's totally him. Oh. But like yesterday. Yeah. I think there are poor decisions made in this movie. For the most part, everybody kind of reacts like a normal person would. I would say the one person who does not react how I would at all in this movie is Toyama, the previous detective who covered yeah. this case. And mm -hmm. this case, mm -hmm. so we jump to another part of town yeah. and we meet the little this little girl, Isumi, who's playing a recorder. No, yeah. Just on the street, drawing, Draw, the drawing, drawing in the dirt. Daddy comes home. And he, she's like, I drew these princesses and princes. And he's like, that's great. I love you, little baby girl. You're the best. I love family life. What Let's a delight. Home. Let's help mom make dinner. 
And these two Uh-oh. detectives show up, and he immediately places his daughter oh, behind right. his back. Yeah. Like, he doesn't want her to get grudged. No. Because he, he it's yeah. like, this is, it's like, like Chinatown up in here. Like, <laughs> yeah. forget about it, Jake. It's Chinatown. Because he knows as soon as he sees this, this other officer come up, he's like, he's been out of the game. This was the case. This murder case was the one that made him leave the police force. Yeah. And sort of like protect his family. And I think subconsciously, he doesn't know that there's an official grudge on, but I think subconsciously he knows that it's either like you got to walk away from this life if you want your wife and family, your wife and daughter to live. Yeah. But as soon as he sees that cop, he knows something is up. Yeah. And they're like, you were the last, you're the only one who was on this case that we can track down, which that right. is something. Right. And um, for whatever reason, I don't understand, for whatever reason, he agrees to fucking do this. <laughs> I mean, he, he just, at least he's comes coming down to consult. Town. Yeah, yes. like all he, he, you know, he's just they're they're just going to show him a video, just a hard, just watch this video, just watch this, just watch this CCTV footage of the security guard that we found dead in the bathroom, and tell us what you think. Um, he while he's there watching the video, the other two detectives get a call because hirohashi from the welfare center was found dead at the welfare center yeah underneath a cart yeah like like folded up under a sink or something yeah something like that but just like oh dead oh my god um i I also love the idea of like you know like the police the detective starts watching the video with the other detectives but then they have to kind of do other stuff so he's like well i guess i'll you know, I guess I'll watch this. And he's like by himself when we now see the rest of the footage. No, 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 no. Don't watch videotapes. <laughs> Just ever. Just ever. Don't Especially watch... not alone. No. Never. But, you know, so we see, so we see the, we see the, the security guard, the mysterious shadow monster kind of beckons him in which is as much as uh uh um the sister saw uh-huh. um but then we see the rest which is just a full on shadow calmly walking down the hallway uh-huh and then it does that thing where it's like you know it's sort of walked past and then it just like envelops the entire screen as if it's like looking into the video camera yeah and then we Uh just you can see the faint two eyes of kayako's face Mm -mm. i just wrote videotape you better burn that videotape i will ground i don't remember typing this into my notes but i just have mumble 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 (laughs) we're in over and over because that's totally the sound she is making um we also see rika in bed She's we getting better. To, yeah, she's, she's out of getting her better. Talking but to her there, friend. But there's a moment where she wakes up to Toshio standing over her and then Kayako coming in from the wall yes. horizontally over yeah. her face. So the assumption here is, is that she got got, but we will figure out later they didn't do her in here. They let her live for a while. Yeah. Like, they're just keeping tabs on her. Yeah. Which, what by the time we get to the Azumi chapter, it's very much of, like, the grudge won't kill you all the time. It kills some people. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it'll fold you up and put you in the linen closet. Other people, they just want to they just want to hang out. Like, you've just got grudge on your shoe. It's just going to linger. Yeah. Which I... I, like part of me really wants an answer to why they do they are like that but also i sort of appreciate deep down that they don't have there's no code of ethics for the grudgies here in the same way that there's no code of ethics for cancer right yeah. like if you yeah. some people get cancer and it and it 
goes away and some people just out of nowhere and it and it and it races through them and it's horrible and in the, the same way that the grudges are they are uh they tear through some people immediately yeah. and other people I, like sachi they yeah. let linger for a long 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 time there, there's some i think the thing with rika is that she's i, I it almost seems like there, there's a like she works with old people she is a caretaker she uh-huh. is like in all in you know cross culture she is a good person uh-huh. she's a caring person she's like the only person that the boy that makes contact with not in ghost form you get this feeling that she's like they they might see her as this you know, as bad as the 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 events happened that created the grudge, that yeah. created the Juan, Rika is like so good that she, yeah. they they they're like maybe she can undo it or maybe she can you know, but they they're not bringing her down into the vortex right away. That's yeah. my only guess. Well, this was tying into the very end of the movie, which I'll go ahead and mention here, which is when Rika gets hers at the end of this movie there's a process where we actually kind of see the grudge taking hold of her not only like physically seeing kayako kind of go into her body but also her seeing what happened to kayako she's in the grudge she is in in the time loop that is the juan and so I wondered, like, does that happen to everyone? Does everyone yeah. see what happened? That's what the catatonic stare is when people are and, like, yeah. And I wonder with Rika, part of the reason why she lingers as long as she does is because I think she is doing her best to try to understand mm. the people she's seeing. You know, yeah. she's terrified of them, but she's not trying to fight them. She's not trying to kill them. She's not trying to arrest them. She's, you know, it's scary to look at. And in the end, she chooses to look at it because she knows she's she wants in it. To, she, she's like, who is the boy? Who is this photo? Who she's are you? digging yeah. deeper. And that empathy yeah, actually is the thing that allows her to live an extra five years. Yeah. Yeah. Or I think two, maybe two there's something or... to that. Yeah. Well, after seeing this videotape, Toyama is like, this is where we get terrified. The movie terrified, right? Terrified Burn clearly is the ground. pulling from the grudge because what yeah. Toyama does is he gets two big containers, big things of gasoline, and he goes to that house and starts pouring it everywhere. But the house is like, no, 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 let me show you something first. I don't, like, listen, you gotta, if you're making a plan, you got to stick to that plan. Yeah. And if you hear a bunch of cats, or creepy footsteps upstairs. You're already eat- no, you, no. You gotta you, stick with the plan. Just do it. Just do it. You know you're going to jail because you're about to burn a house down. Yeah. Well, he hears not footsteps. Cat. He doesn't. Yeah, it's not cats. It's some footsteps, but they sound more natural. Yeah. And it sounds like young girls talking, and yeah. what he hears are like teenage girls upstairs, like talking and laughing and whatever. And then one girl comes down the stairs, total high school girl, school uniform, stops and stares right at him, like yeah. kind of scared of him, uh, or a little startled, like curious, yeah. like what the fuck are you? Like through a doorway, through two yeah. door- doorways, yeah. The other thing that's amazing, because he shows up at night, I but love every this. time he sees the girls, it's daytime where they're at. But there's like the sun shining through. Incredible. Like the simplest. And yet the most ups- like uh, off-putting. Yeah. And this girl leaves. She yeah. just gets out of there. And and, and then he goes, screams. Yeah. Well, he, goes up, he goes upstairs, sees three other girls in this room. room. Yeah. And then he hears the screams. And the next thing we see is Kayako spider crawling. Like, this reminded me of Mad- Medusa in the original Clash of the Titans, the way oh, she yeah, crawled, yeah, 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 um, toward him yeah. and down the stairs at him. The other two detectives show up just in time to meet their fate. <laughs> yep, which we don't even know what that means. It's like it. This movie goes right up to the edge of violence uh-huh. so many times, and then just moves on, mm-hmm. and you're sort of left. 
and then on to the next chapter and you're hoping or maybe not you know like you're just sort of left being like well what happened what happened what ha are we gonna find are they dead are they yeah. just are they disappeared where are the bodies yeah some of the bodies are found some of them are definitely not yeah we never know and similar to the ring right like uh and and pulse this is a movie where you die of fright yeah yeah this isn't like slacks where you die from getting <laughs> disemboweled yes. and torn in half by pants yeah um yeah so we see our our two detectives get got basically yeah. and toyama is running away as Runs out of the house. yeah next chapter isumi isumi this, is one this one took me a minute yes this one took me this one took me like a full 10 minutes to be like okay i know he called that little girl izumi yes i'm pretty sure yes so it is now 10 years later yeah we presume she's five, like five, 11 six, six probably six five or six, six years, years later. later yeah okay but yeah this is Zumi and a couple of her friends they're on the streets uh walking to class so a couple things one Zumi sees a poster for three missing teenage girls in school uniforms and it really shakes her really shakes her for a second and then when we hear her friends call her Izumi, this is where I was like, oh, shit, that was that little girl's name. I yeah. think I only caught this immediately because I, as I'm taking notes, I get any name I get, I write it yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, that name stands out immediately yeah, yeah. of Izumi. But, yeah, this is such a good fake. Like, who is this teen girl he saw? Why did yeah. she stare at him? Whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, they get to class and all of the school photos have been posted on the wall I love but this. But Izumi's wasn't there. Oh no. What happened? And she's They're kind like, of sad. And her friends and her are friend, like, I love it. Her friend, uh, the, the relationship between the friends and the teacher, just like, hey, hey, Mr. Yearbook teacher. Yeah. She's not in any of these goddamn photos. And he's like, Yeah, yeah I'll, okay, I'll I'll look at the negatives. Jeez, children. Uh-huh. Stop pulling on my sweater. This yeah. ugly yellow. Oh my God. Again, the the 90s Audis fashion. Uh-huh. Woof. Woof. So she, uh, <laughs> on the way home from school, she sees that missing, missing girls poster again on her walk home. At home, TV news report, you hear that the body of Rika was found. Right. Okay. So, because the last time we saw Rika, the two, these two grudgy ghosts were hovering over her bed, yeah. but they're actually this moment they're referencing the end of the film which we haven't seen yet yes yes so izumi now is getting into catatonic she's yeah. we see her approach because she gets into her room and closes the curtains yeah and it is we presume days go by and her two friends like yeah. One, they they cost their yearbook, Mr. Yearbook teacher, and like, yeah. give us those photos. He's like, I just developed them. Here, take them. Yeah, and, and he had said it would take about a week. Yeah. So it's like, she's been a shut-in for a week. They go to her her apartment. Her mom answers the door looking bedraggled. Gaunt. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Like, mother is not giving. No. I, and, and, and listen, Izumi is quickly following suit yes um when they come into zumi's room she like screams at them not to open the curtains yeah they're watching they're, they're looking in at me oh man similar to the l which is why the elevator scene is so like oh i get it yeah like these ghosts like once you've been grudged they're always there but like they do like to just sort of press their nose up against the glass and just be yeah. like oh look at you living your life yeah and she tells them, you know, the th she says the three of them are looking at me. And they're like, who? And she means the three friends, the missing girls. Yes. And then so we piece this all together like, oh, she then explains, we went to this haunted house. Kind of dared each other to dared go each ring other. the doorbell. Yeah, yeah. I got scared and left. And my three friends stayed and they went missing. 
And I felt bad about it and also scared because it was so freaky that it was like a haunted house. And they like, I just, everything is scary. And now they are trying, they are staring at me through these windows. Which she has now taped uh, uh, like newspaper Newspaper. clippings to. Yes. And uh, oh my God. Yeah. So they, uh, she she then is like having a full meltdown of like they're coming for me they're yeah, coming for yeah. me and her friends are pretty shaken and leave i love her one friend when they when they leave and they're talking to the mom and the her mom says you know that's what my husband was like before he died and her one one of izumi's friends says does izumi know about that and her mom's like nah no right it's like, are you communicating? It's such a good question. Yeah. Like that is such a meaningful, caring question. Yeah. Have you talked to your daughter about this? About the death of the mysterious death of her father. And how she's matching all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Does that not yeah? Yeah, this is this is very much about this movie very much feels about depression. It very much yeah. feels about like the way in which we don't communicate or don't understand one another. Yeah. Um well, and, and oftentimes the way that we're trying to protect people that we love from these things. Uh-huh. But in fact, we're only isolating further. Yeah. But moments later on the streets, they crack open these photos that had just been freshly printed and see photos of Izumi. And those three missing friends are in these photos too. And all of them, their eyes are blacked out. Hollowed. 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 Yeah, not just like a black line, but like eyes look like they've been yeah. spooned out and and then, um, put, and then put a little zorro mask on top of that's them. right or like a little raccoon but her friend who had just asked this really deep and meaningful question of the mother of like why didn't you communicate her response to these photos is to scream throw the photos down and run away like even she doesn't want to face it yeah i mean what do you, you like the cursed cursed image cursed yeah. object yeah she's like i can't handle this and out yeah well Zumi sees her father inside her house doing that little rattle 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 noise yeah. mumble 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 he's reaching toward her and suddenly she wakes up like as from a dream not a yeah. dream who knows yeah. and there are her three ghost friends in the window yep just peeking in peeking in in between the the newspaper clippings slow chase uh, she tries to put a broom up against a sliding door like none okay. of this is working <laughs> he puts a wicker chair and a broom in front of a door that slides i was like i, I don't think that you know what but again it's this movie is all about the build-up yeah it's not you know like this is not you know laurie strode like in the in the closet hiding from no from mike myers like that is actual like barricade the door kind of shit or hide. Yeah. This is, it's more of a gesture. Yes. To hide, you know? Yeah. But she gets all backed all the way against the family shrine. Yeah. And then from the shrine comes Kayako who grabs her by the face and pulls her backwards. Sucks her into a black yeah. void. And then the last thing we see is her and her father's sort of ghost faces hovering in the blackness. Yeah. Very kabuki, very no. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right. So now we are at our final chapter, which is Kayako. Yeah. So we're back to Rika. We yeah. get a sense it's several years later. Yep. She's Rika's looking, she has a new haircut. Yeah. She's looking healthy. She's working She's full time and... at yep. the welfare center, it seems. She's pushing around an old dude who is is waving at children, playing peekaboo uh, with playing peekaboo with full broad full broad daylight with uh, <laughs> with someone that nobody else can see. Oh, <sighs> um, there is a moment where okay, so well, she gets a call from Mariko, yeah, uh, who is now teach who is now a teacher, a teacher, yeah. And we're like, oh my god, girl, we should totally meet up yeah. again, hang ah. out. Ah. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! I got concert tickets because yes. you know that guy that we went to high school. You always had a crush on. He gave. He said we should go. Uh huh. It's cute. So, it's very cute. And uh, there's a moment where she's showering up to go meet Mariko, and not cute. Not this cute. Is, and, no. and an extra hand just slides. Oh my in. <laughs> god! Now this is one where I I think they actually underplayed 
okay, one, if I had hair, let's just be real here. But uh-huh. if I am in the shower and I feel something on my body that is another person's body, uh-uh. I am burning my house down. I am like, like she just sort of looks around and goes, huh? Huh? Oh, that's weird. I would be throwing, like I would have dismantled my entire bathroom. Yes. Oh my God. That's so, just her two hands washing her hair from behind and that extra gray hand extra just hands. slides on it. No. Well lubricated because of the conditioner, you know? Yeah, I know, right? It's easy just, to slide like, that get in. Your, just, you know, just give it a little scalp massage. Oh my God. Um, so at, she's meeting at this cafe, this little restaurant with, with, uh, Mariko and Mariko says, uh-huh. uh, it's a little stressful. Cause I have one, all these kids are great, but I have one problem child. Yeah. And it's this case where like, we're six weeks into the school year. He hadn't even come to class yet, which means now I have to do a home visit. Yeah. Such a drag. Every, all the teachers are done with all the, it's like the PTA meeting at the beginning uh-huh. of semester. This kid's never showed up. His name is Toshio. Uh-uh. And, it's just like what <laughs> well yeah and she uh it's actually she doesn't actually say toshio yet like it's kind of oh, a throwaway okay. moment what happens is the black cat crosses rika's that's feet right. under the table that's and when right. she like, looks under the tablecloth there's fucking toshio under there she screams she screams and has to go home yeah. and there she basically has a nap or in you just, she wakes up to yeah. cats everywhere in her bedroom. Like meow, 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 like layers of meows. Mm-hmm. And there's like 25 black cats just chilling yeah. in her room. I mean, listen, that's a great dream. They're a little noisy, but I would love it. Maybe a little stinky. A little stinky. Then her phone rings. But the, it's, yeah, it's, just like it's smash Mariko. Cut. Yeah, yeah smash so cut it's daylight. We assume, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's the daylight, nighttime, daytime, nighttime thing. That's when Mariko calls her. And she's like, hey, I'm just checking in on you because, yeah. you know, and Rika's like, God, I'm so sorry. I ruined your one day off. Uh, I just, I had a spell. It sucks. And Mariko's like, no worries. Actually, I just used my day to go do my house call with this yeah, family. Yeah. So it's really weird. I'm at this house. No one is here but the little boy. And we yeah. pan out and see that it is Toshio. Yeah. And then Rika can hear the cat howl on the phone yeah, with, yeah, yeah. and she yeah. says, uh, Wait, what is exactly. the little boy's name? Yeah. Toshio. Where you... exactly are you? <laughs> uh huh. And now Rika is on her way yeah. to that house to try and save Mariko, who we last see just heading upstairs looking for where that little boy went to. That little scamp. That little scamp playing some playing sardines. <laughs> so we we can tell it's not a close distance because it's daytime when she leaves and it is nighttime when she yeah. arrives. So yeah. it's a chunk of time. And when she arrives into the house, she the first thing she sees are Mariko's shoes inside by the door, but no she lights on. Friend. She knows her friend is there somewhere. or what But there, there is there? no light on. No. <laughs> and she hears that high pitch ringing sound. Yep. And this is so interesting because she, her face, like to talk about the, the actor who played Katsuya earlier, the woman playing Rika here is so incredible because yep. the look on her face is fright. But it's also a little bit of like acceptance. Like she knows, she's like, I understand. Yeah. She's like, she knows she's walking into a haunted house and she's scared and trepidatious, but she's way more prepared than any other character in this film. Yeah. And she also understands. Final scene. I mean, she's a final girl. She is a, she is this film's final girl because she's like, I understand the parameters that I'm in a horror film now, but I'm going to save my goddamn friend. Or at least do my best. Yeah, that's totally it. And she goes all the way up and she sees Mariko being pulled The legs. The legs dangling. Into the attic. No, no. no. Hard no. But she goes after. She's like, she's true final girl energy in this minute. Yeah. But here comes Kayako. Spider walking. Yeah, spider walking. And this is the longest we actually see 
Kayako. Uh huh. Like, like I mean, like, like Kayako essentially stalks her from the attic to the second level to the first level, and we kind of it's like the most we get to see her in these long shots. And this is where it's very Buto. It's very like she doesn't blink. It like she's like kind of pressing her face in between the the um the the uh banister of the stairs. Uh huh unwavering eye contact yeah like it's i don't know it's just like really admirable to see like people make a strong physical choice and just like make that choice for all like wring every bit of juice out of that choice yes nope i mean and like she's kind of got like a bloody sheet on her but it's not disembodied bowels it's not brain splattering everywhere no it's just unnatural naturalness yeah there's a moment where at the ground floor rika walks past a mirror mm -hmm. and as she passes it pretty quickly yeah. we see that her reflection is kayako yeah in the mirror and she stops and goes back to look and it is just herself but as she is like lifting her hands up other hands come with that <laughs> well she th there's a there's a bit of a like montage of uh -huh. all the people in the film who have gone catatonic who have gone shock and they all have their hands in front of their eyes as if like no, like almost like putting on specter ray goggles uh -huh. like you can't like you're looking at normal reality and then you like see the world through your hands as if in fright and yeah. it allows you to see this extra level of ghost vision yeah i i so much wish i had watched this movie before i had seen terrified um like right beforehand yeah. uh because yeah. i know you and jen brown had seen that I, I, well, I don't know about Jim, but I know you had seen The Grudge before. But like, right, but who like knows how long? Like, yeah, like when long it came time. Out. Yeah. But they would be an interesting pairing to see yeah. what uh, Rugna, I think, is his name, that the director of Terrified, like, kind of where he's pulling from in yeah. The Grudge. Like, there's there's a lot of, and I don't mean that pejoratively. I think he's yeah. really like uh, honorably pulling concepts yeah. and ideas. But the idea of like. You can't see something by looking directly at it. You have to shift how you see a thing in order to see it correctly. Yeah. To magic eye the shit out of this. And like spectrovision goggles are just your fingers over your eyes. Yeah. Uh, same thing. Which is also the gesture of fright. Yeah. Which I love too. That like So it's like even if you are afraid or you're not afraid, it doesn't matter. It's like you you make the shape of afraid. Or to be afraid is to see the scary thing. Yeah. Um, and 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 should you see the scary thing? Maybe you should actually. Maybe you should be seeing it, which I think is the decision Rika makes here, which is yeah. I should see the scary thing. I do need to accept the fear. I need to sit in the depression, the angst, the ennui, the fright, yeah. the sadness. To go back to the moment mm -hmm. of when the grudge, when the Juan was created, like a moment of such, we get into the opening title sequence, a moment of such violence that a, an entity was created, not of any one person, but like a darkness was created. Yeah. And that's the only way to figure out what the fuck it is. Yeah. Because we learned that it's like, it's not been any one person killing these people. It's like something separate. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like a byproduct of the death of uh, the you know like all these deaths. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. and, well, and Rika is the only one who gets to witness that creation. Yeah, and we see through this the the mirror routine that they do through the way in which uh, Kayako kind of comes into her like up her body and into yeah. her chest, like yeah. the movement, the dance, the choreography of mm -hmm. this really suggests she is her and her is she. Yeah. And here comes Takeo now down the stairs. This is the first time we get a straight on look at this man. Yeah. And he's not ghost. No, no white makeup. Mm -mm. Bloody it's though. Like, bloody, but it's, but it's like, we're watching a time loop. Mm -hmm. Like she's in the time loop. But as 
Ryoka. Ryoka. Yes. And um no, Kayako. We're as Kayako. Yes. So she is so this is Rika, but she is yes. Kayako now. Like yes. you sort of assume that she's embodied that. And here comes Takio down the stairs, he all bloody, and we assume maybe this is how he killed his the, the motion of how he yeah. killed his wife. Like this is we're seeing the memory imprinted into the house through the grudge yeah. that says he came down there and then his wife had cowered by the front door and he finally killed her yeah. there. And that's what he <clears throat> that's what he does with Rika. And all the while Toshio is watching from the balcony. Right. Is his favorite little spot. Mm-hmm. And um the last shot we see from Rika's point of view is just Takio's bloody hand reaching toward the camera as she's saying, she's shouting no. Cut to missing posters, missing persons posters all over yeah. city streets. Lots of them, actually. Lots of them, and the streets are entirely empty. Uh -huh. Which I went, I, I did some digging and I went on like to a few chat forums and they kind of, there was somebody had a, you know, like on Reddit, had this idea of like, very similar to Terrified, the grudge you've got grudge on you and it expands and uh -huh. expands and expands. And presumably it is now everyone is affected. Like it kind of yeah. similar to the end of pulse where like this, the, the reverberations of this act have now taken out yeah. everyone. Yeah. Now that is an ex a bit of an extrapolation. Uh -huh. I just think it's kind of interesting that it's like these sort of faded, you know, faded missing posters on empty streets, just, who's left to investigate yeah yeah and also like that that speaks to the silence of like the closed doors everywhere like we've communicated through signage but we we're not actually saying hey this happened and this happened and then this happened and like nobody is like who's left to investigate who's left to just talk to each other about what have you seen yeah. what can we do how can we help you know like yeah. a community not just the investigators but community of people a family of people then we cut to rika's body but kayako's hair like she's wearing a kayako yeah. wig yeah and she's got a single tear of blood and she's wrapped up in plastic bag inside that attic so again like theatrically staged like the death of kayako like how she yeah. was killed and stored in the attic and then the last thing we see is her eyes, her red, red eyes pop open, and we hear that death rattle. The Fuck end. yeah. Shall we rate this movie? Yes, let's. All right, listen, if you're horror film averse, I'll give this a rating for how approachable this is. Cecil's going to give this a rating just as a horror film in general, like quality horror film where it ranks in the canon. But... Let's talk about approachability first. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being not at all approachable if you're squeamish about this shit, and 10 being super approachable if you're squeamish, I I'd give Jew on the Grudge like 3 out of 10 hell addicts. Like, it's not bloody. The opening sequence, definitely, but it it's obscured blood. Like, there's no gore. There's no slashing. There's no squirting. It's just blood yeah, you on don't even hands. get the, like, like, like last week's film, this, like, kind of squirt up against a wall. Mm. No, the supernatural it's... death as I or the TV show Supernatural, like you just see a shadow and a yeah, yeah, you don't not, even get that. It's enough. just it's just painted on hands and shit. This is just a fucking spooky creep fest. So if you want to see spooky fucking faces and get some good jump scares by white faced children just not supposed not there a second ago, uh -huh. then um yeah, if you want that sort of thing, this is your movie. But yeah, if you're a little horror squeamish, you know, you may want to build to this one. I think The Ring is more approachable than The Grudge as far as spooky factor, if I remember correctly. I remember The yeah. Ring having a slightly comedic edge to it. Like it's, it's, it's got also a much more investigative. Like yes. It's like we're going to follow this woman as she tries to figure out what the fuck is the curse. You know, she's been yeah. cursed. This This yeah. is a little more like, everyone's everyone is mm -hmm. involved everyone's yes. implicated yes so yeah for approachability let's just say three out of ten and obviously like content warnings for child death animal death uh listen that the the 
t- if you got tinnitus, that fucking high pitch squeal okay. noise, holy shit. Um, and yeah, there you go. Uh, Cecil as a horror film, where's this in the canon of horror? This is this is pretty far up there. Mm-hmm. Like it's subtle, it's uh spooky, it's understated, it's also very um smart like i said it's like it plays with time it plays with space it plays with light it like it does a lot of very theatrical things and does them in such a way that just creates this kind of spooky creep fest um and i think there's a reason why late 90s early 2000s uh asian horror was like really hooked into something Uh that is doesn't talk down to its audience and kind of draws you in it allows you to like lean into the mystery of it while also understanding that it's ghosty as fuck so <laughs> yeah. for that reason i'm gonna give it eight out of ten little teddy bear charms oh yeah nice well let's figure out what movie we will watch next you've got a scare die i have a style die we'll roll those up see what movie matches those two things so if you roll a one cecil our next movie scare is isolation two mythological Three, aquatic scare. Four, evil bureaucracy. Five, animals. Or six, a body horror scare. That's a four. We're going to get that evil bureaucracy. Do you have those TPS reports for me? (laughs) Yep. TPS (laughs) reports of death. (laughs) All right. So we are going to see what style uh, we get here. If I, on my style die, if I roll a one, Our next movie has to come out of the Southern Hemisphere. If I roll a two, it's a wild card, whatever evil bureaucracy we want. Three has to be based on a book. Four has to be by a female director. Five, uh, titular punctuation. It's got to have punctuation in the title. And six, something in the sci-fi realm. So let's roll this up. A good solid roll. I have got a three. It's got to be based on a book, Evil Bureaucracy. Ooh, okay. So let's figure out what the folks on Letterboxd, our followers on Letterboxd, we keep lists on Letterboxd so you can see all of the potential matchups for whatever we could roll on our grid. Uh, so you join Letterboxd and you can, you know, leave comments for those possibilities and help us pick these next movies. So, um, We have some suggestions on Letterboxd, but you and I wrote down a couple ourselves that we can cover as well. So let me do the ones that we wrote down, and then why don't you tell us what Letterboxd came up with? All right, hold on just a second here. I've got to get my windows right. All right, so three came immediately to mind that are all pretty bigger bigger movies. Um, There's 1984. I mean... That's evil bureaucracy. The, the that is based of off bureaucracy. Of ministry the, of thought, ministry of love, all that sort uh-huh. of business. And it is the book of books. Like the double is, plus ungood. Uh-huh. Uh, another one was uh, Shutter Island, based off of the Dennis Lehane novel. This, oh, is, this is based on a book. I didn't know that. Yeah, this is a uh, Dennis Lehane novel. It is, uh, yeah, it is. What's happening at this old asylum? Let's investigate. Hopefully we don't get locked up inside. And hopefully Uh-oh. it's not. Wait, it's a trap. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the third one is uh, a brand new film, a uh, Zone of Interest. Um, so that's another one that is based off of uh, a book. And I didn't know this one. Uh what is what is this? What is this? Um well at the time we're recording, the Oscars haven't happened yet. So this one's a little tough because the time of us recording, it's only in cinemas. Okay. This is one I have not seen, but I understand it is one that is better to go in not knowing a shit ton about. Oh, okay. I'm now reading a little bit of descriptions here. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. You will sort of understand from a from a cursory read of the description what the evil bureaucracy is. I think I get it. I also don't know that this is a horror film, but uh, I, I think it's more an Oscar film. Yeah. And I think it's upsetting, but I don't know that it's the horror. The horror comes from the, re- the morality of yes. the situation, maybe? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, so those are the three we put down for, based on a book, Evil Bureaucracy. What do folks on Letterbox have to say? Let's see. King and Commoner recommends a Clockwork Orange. Definitely oh, of some course. Evil bureaucracy there. Definitely some scariness there. Mm-hmm. I like their second. I that's a solid recommendation. I also like their second recommendation, which is the Dead Zone. 
based on oh, the Stephen King book. Of course, I had forgotten. Because King Commander points out, if you count evil presidential candidate as bureaucracy, and I think that's a beautiful, well done there. Uh, yeah, that's that. a great call, yeah. Uh, Not All Karens recommends The Girl with All the Gifts, dystopian uh-huh. future in which the government and scientists deal with a zombie-like reality. Yep. I've not seen this one. I think I watched like the first 20 minutes and something came up, like dinner was ready kind of thing, and I just didn't want to eat dinner with a bunch of zombies. So I've actually not <laughs> seen this film to its entirety. Let's see. Squin recommends The Cremator from 1969. Oh, well, this is interesting. Um, doing a quick, doing a little quick search. Yeah, the uh, synopsis. Ooh, my. Okay. 1930s Prague, a Czech cremator who firmly believes cremation uh, relieves one from earthly suffering is drawn except inexorably to Nazism. Okay. All right. We're getting, I'm, I'm noticing a trend. I'm noticing a trend. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, let's see, weapon, weaponized toaster seconds a clockwork orange and also recommends Storm of the Century, a 1999 oh. miniseries about a dangerous blizzard that hits an isolated town and brings a mysterious stranger intent on terrorizing people for his own desires. Interesting. Cronenberg uh, TA recommends The Devils, 17th century France, Father Urban Grandier's protection of the city of Laudon from the corrupt Cardinal Richelieu is undermined by a sexually repressed nun's accusation of witchcraft based on Aldous Huxley's Devils of Laudon. I did not know that this was did not know either. Aldous Huxley. Wow. I've seen this movie. And this is one of those movies that is like, it is current at time of recording. It is out in the world. It's on Criterion. It's available, but it often goes into the into the vaults yes uh let's see uh ilian seconds the cremator which oh that sounds that sounds brutal uh, cremator anime. by the way is uh this is widely considered by many critics to be the finest film ever made from czechoslovakia what? when oh, they were in the same okay. country um it is a criterion collection film it is also it was not allowed for whatever reason, for evil bureaucracy reasons, into the 42nd Annual Academy Awards, but Fuck. it was the it was Czechoslovakia's uh, uh, nominee for best foreign language film. Like you know, you've made a movie about evil bureaucracy so good that the evil bureaucracy won't let you show your movie about evil bureaucracy. Like you know, you've hit it. Then. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. Ganymede's Cup recommends They Live, the John Carpenter yeah, starring yeah. Roddy Piper. I mean, wait, was that based on a book, though? I don't know. It, apparently, according to Ganymede's Cup, based on a 1963 short story, Eight O'Clock in the Morning, by Ray Nelson. All right. Well, it is then. Listen, Great. I, my, my reading list is just getting longer and longer. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, you guys. Uh-huh. Hey, letters. Uh, didn't. Oh, also says they did not know that They Live was based um, on a short story, but they love that that choice mm-hmm. as well love it um oblate ellipsoid recommends death race 2000 from 1975 totality i've seen this movie this movie is a wild ride <laughs> a totalitarian totalitarian pacifies its population with an annual race where you score points by running as many people over as possible based on the racer this is a classic like uh uh, Hunger Games or Battle Royale, yeah. like all Dystopian, of these types of movies. Yeah, we got to yeah, kill yeah. everyone. Uh, the Running Man. Yeah. Yes. Uh, they also recommend Snowpiercer. Okay. Based on Les Transpercieges. <laughs> mm-hmm. Didn't know, I didn't know Snowpiercer was based on a book. Didn't well. either. Ray Ray Baxter recommends Eyes Wide Shut based on the book Trom Novel by author Schnitzler. Okay. And again, I love Eyes Wide Shut. I didn't know it was based. I mean, I don't love it. It's yeah, a, it's but... like a hard movie to love. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I yeah. respect the fuck out of it, but like, mm-hmm. it's a good, it's a great film. Yes. But yeah, I, I, my, my reading list for this summer is just like building and building. And finally, Fifth Hammer recommends The Consultant from 2023. Uh, a new consultant, uh, Chris, played by Christoph Waltz, um, is hired to improve the business of an app-based gaming company, Compware. Employees experience new demands and challenges that put everything into question, including their lives uh eight 30 ish minutes episodes based okay. on bentley little novel by the same name okay all right so this is um like a mini series mini yeah say. tv show or mini series yeah y'all with the thank you for bringing some i so many movies that were based on books that i didn't know 
Okay, so I'm going to tell you the ones that I'm most interested in. None of the ones that we wrote. It was uh, King and Commoners, The Dead Zone. Just absolutely yeah. inspired pick. Yeah. Uh, Squin bringing up the cremator. I'm really fascinated with this one because I've never heard of it. We have already watched one Czech film, right? Was uh, Valerie and her Week of Wonders? Oh, Wasn't yes. that Czech? Yes. Um, also, that one was from 1970. I think this one's a 1969 film. Really fascinated with this. And the other one is like, they live. <laughs> I had no idea it was based on a story. Those all stand out to me. That all of these sound great, though. What about you? What's standing out to you? Yes, uh, I mean Shutter Island is 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 a good one. Mm -hmm. 1984 is a good one as well. But never seen I, that movie. I, you know what? Here's the thing. I just watched it like literally two weeks ago. Oh, I was wow. in a really bleak mood, and I was like, you know what? I need the bleakest of bleaks. Uh huh. So I kind of just watched it. It's still a good film. Like John Hurt is amazing in it. But also, I'm like, you know what? There's some, something, some some meals you don't want to eat two nights in a row. You yeah, know what I'm course, saying? Of course, yes. But I like, I love the Dead Zone. I I love They Live, but also The Devils is like, <gasps> oh, The Devils, yeah. It's 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 um, it, yes. Like any of any of those. This is this this is The Devils. And then Cremator 19... is one that I know nothing about. It's yeah, uh, you know, kind of a wild card in there. The Devils is one that's come up a, a few times on the show that we haven't quite gotten to yet. This is the Ken Russell film, right? From yes. 1971. Yeah. This that's was banned. Yeah, yeah. This was a uh, this was banned in England for a long time, maybe the US as well. Yeah. Um Yeah, this one looks really fascinating. They're both Criterion movies. Mm -hmm. Um have you have you seen The Devils before? Oh, yeah. It's just been a while. Oh, yes, it's been okay. but it's been a long time. It's like you want to talk about the bureaucracy of the church and like uh -huh. when the bureaucracy is all around you. Oh my uh -huh. God. This, yeah. I am. Yeah. I think it's the question of like, do you want to, do you want to explore the unseen corners of the museum or do you want to like still hit the, still hit the hits? Yeah. Cause like hit the hits. Well, you never know when the hits are going to come back. I mean, Christopher Walken in the dead zone is also like, that's, Oh yeah. That's... Have you ever seen the dead zone? I have. I've, I okay. I just watched it last year because I read the book last year, I believe, okay. for the first time. Yeah, um, loved it. Chris Chris Walken, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, totally rewatchable film. Um, how? What do you think? Do we want to? Do you want to just grab one of these first? Just any, mini, miny, mow it. Do you want to roll know, for it? Because they're so they're so all over the map. Yeah, like the difference between they live. Uh huh. And the cremator is like night, night and day. I'm sure. Yes. Or the devils versus Shutter Island versus yes. a Clockwork Orange. Well, actually, I would say there's probably more like the devils and a Clockwork Orange are probably more close than you think. Also, Death Race. Oh shit! Yeah. It's more action film than horror film, but I, uh -huh. you know, I'm, I get, I get where it's at. I get where. Yeah. It's at. Man, this is so tough. Um. I feel like we have enough to roll. Do we want to yeah. just leave it up to chance? Random horror nine, baby. All right. So one, if we roll a one, let's do the cremators. The cremator. The cremator. cremator sorry, not the cremators, but to the devils, not the devils. Um, Three, we've got death race. Four, we've got, uh, uh, what you call it? Uh, dead zone. Dead zone. Five, we have um, Shutter Up. Oh, oh, yeah, they live. And what's our sixth one? Um, Shutter, Shutter, Island? Shutter yeah. Island or uh, Clockwork, or Clockwork Orange? Orange? I think Shutter Island is more yeah. horror. Absolutely. Like there's moments moments of horrific violence in a Clockwork Orange, but I, or, you know, like we're we're kind of squinting a little bit at horror into thriller, into drama into suspense yeah know. which i don't mind for the show but we have so many good horror candidates that we might as well lean more horror yeah. okay so those are our six i think i rolled the die last time we did this so do you want to roll this one up all right i'm gonna go roll all right so one. just as a reminder to listeners one the cremator two the devils three death race 2004 dead zone five they live six shutter island what are we gonna watch cecil 
off the desk. Wait. Uh oh. Five. We're gonna watch They Live. You know what? Bring it. Br- bring it, motherfuckers. I love it. We're like Criterion. Criterion. No, we're gonna watch. Was it Rowdy Roddy Piper? Yep. Yep, we are. We're absolutely going to watch that. And it is available for rent uh, wherever you rent your films. And it's it was, a, it's been a minute since we've had a Carpenter moment. It has. And I haven't seen this movie in five or 10 years. It's been a I. it's been yeah. a while. It's it's a, a, like almost like a like a virgin. It's also like a cool hour and 30 minutes long and 20 minutes. That is two men fighting in an alley. That's, that's so that's like, so this movie is a breeze. So yeah. I think we have this. Well, shit, that kind of came out of left field. I love that we rolled for that. Also, uh, also, I'm going to see if I can find this short story. Of course, this um just as uh this came to us from uh from Ganymede's Cup. So thank you for that suggestion because I would have never thought this was based on a story. All right. Well, thank you all for listening, and thank you Cecil for talking with me. And if y'all have thoughts on Jew on the Grudge or ideas for movies that would have been good evil bureaucracy based on a book let us know over on instagram at random horror nine or on our patreon where we have public discussion threads for each and episode each and every episode and you do not need to be a paying member to participate in those things so watch they live from john carpenter with us this week and come on back next tuesday for a new episode have a restful night with no pile of cats keeping you up at night or nothing boo boo